Phillips had an epiphany. Now, the word epiphany can, can have religious meaning. I don't think that that's what they were referring to here, but an epiphany is also a moment of clarity, a moment of real insight that often comes from you know, a very simple experience. And I think that for Phillips, there came a moment where we realized because the world is changing, we need to embrace creativity. And that was the first sort of lesson and, and best practice that, I, that I'd like to share for today. Because up until that moment, within Philips, there was always this debate. And, and in all honesty, I would say that in some parts of the organization, it still exists. But what I have really been trying to champion is that creativity and effectiveness are not mutually exclusive. In fact, today more than ever, you need creativity in order to be effective. Because if you do not get people's attention, then there are more than enough other things for a consumer to be doing. They're not going to spend time in your brand. You're not going to achieve your business objectives or your marketing objectives. So I said I wanted to talk about the TV business. Let, let, let's let's, let's uh, go a little bit deeper into, into the journey that we have. The TV business is, is quite challenging for two reasons. The first is uh, if you ever walk into a store to purchase a television, you see a, a sea of televisions, this big wall. And all the televisions essentially look the same. There's very little differentiation. And when manufacturers have tried or brands have tried to differentiate in the past, they do it on technical specifications. But we all know as marketeers that real creativity only comes when you make a choice and you are single-minded. So the second thing that I'd, I'd like to say that we learned was it's really important to pick an engagement platform. You have to listen to your consumers. You have to develop deep insights. And from those insights, identify a space that you can own. It's a little bit like a, like a positioning or a category positioning in our case because we, we have a mono brand. But something that's really relevant to your target audience, people that really will be passionate about and will want to spend time with your brand. And for us, I'll just very, very quickly go through this. For us, that was all about cinema. Because there's a group of people who, they even call themselves movie lovers. These are people who love going to the cinema. And going to the cinema is unlike any other TV or film experience that you've ever had. We've done all this research, it's fascinating. Next time that you go to the cinema with a partner, look around you. Because what happens when couples go to the cinema is they walk in holding hands and they sit down and maybe they put their arms around one another and they lean over and they share popcorn. But within 30 seconds of the film beginning, all of those hands are back into their own laps and people are completely looking forward because you completely lose yourself in the experience. So this campaign did wonders for us in terms of getting Philips back on the map, starting to establish us with this cinema space, um, and also started to really make a dent in our purchase funnel. But having said that, and despite all the accolades, and despite the fact that you know, we, we really started to make progress, this campaign was not a success in my point of view. Because this campaign only started to scratch the surface. It understood that you needed creativity, it understood that you needed to integrate the online and the offline world, and it, understood, and it understood that you needed to create an engagement platform. But it pretty much stopped then, because we very naively said, and I remember the debates internally, we're developing this website with this functionality. We need to drive people to our own website. We didn't realize that you can't ask people to come to you, but you need to go to them. Just very quickly, you know, for Carousel, everything went to Philips.com, had to go to <laughs> Philips.com. From the very beginning, we said the PR and the viral activities we're going to do, we're going to drive traffic to Facebook or to YouTube, and then people will get to our site. We went to where consumers were instead of asking consumers to come to us. So just as a final recap, what are the things that I talked about today? The first was, it's really important to embrace creativity. In this new world, you have to find a reason for people to engage with you. You have to break through the clutter. The second is, you have to focus and pick an engagement platform. Not a feature, not even an individual benefit, but something that you can really rally people around integrate online and offline worlds. People don't just live in the digital world, they, they live in both. Provide relevant and compelling content. We think that content is king and will continue to be king um, in, in this digital world. Have a longer term plan in place. Um, don't just think about launching a campaign and then moving on to the next thing. Always think ahead. Answer any and all comments that are directed to you. Active moderation engagement is important. 
Never forget your objectives. We're marketeers. We have a purpose here. This isn't just to become famous online. There are enough reality stars for that. We have to achieve business objectives and link everything back to business objectives. And then finally, your communications tactics have to change. If you realize that the world has changed, then you as a marketeer and as a brand manager have to change as well. For most of us, this is, we see the importance in this. But actually, there's a lot of a job for all of us, me included, to convince the business around us that there is a need to do this. How, at the moment, we don't have an established link, an established link or metric between online engagement and effectiveness, whether you're talking in a B2B sense or a B2C sense. Well, I, I mean, I think that uh, measurement, of course, is important. My last point of, you know, we, we have marketing objectives, we have communication objectives, and we have to be able to um, demonstrate the ROI of all of these activities. I think that the amount of data that is available um, increases by the day. There are more and more tools that are being offered. There are more and more services that are being offered. But what we have really tried to do is just experiment. We've been able to create pilots and test cases where we can say this is what has happened in market A that has engaged in these activities and this is what has happened in market B during exactly the same period of time that has not engaged in those activities. So we're creating our own sort of research labs so that we're able to learn the effectiveness of, of, of different tactics. Mark Ritson who's a columnist in Marketing Week and I have, a, have an argument going on where I say social media is more about is as much about PR and as much about insight gathering, as much about engaging with the consumer where the consumer is as, as anything else and it has to be seen as um, an integrated package. So you might get insight about MPD uh, as, as much as a thing as opposed to just seeing it in an isolated example. What would you say with the shifts that you see coming to business people and marketing people who aren't yet convinced of the need to engage um, across all channels like this? Um, I don't think that, I don't come across many clients that aren't convinced of the need to engage across these channels. Um, what I come across all the time is clients who don't understand how to and are looking for the confidence to use these channels in the most effective way. And back to Gary's point, I think courage, you know, the, the fact that there wasn't a clear measure, you know, there's no guarantee, um, but act and experimentation and lead the way. Um, because back, back to my point initially, as, as we all wait for the defined answer, our brands die while other brands innovate and invent the answer. Um, and that lack of courage is something that personally I find, I find really uninspiring. I want to work with partners and I'm sure that most of the people who are here in this room want to work with partners, want to work within our own organisations and with other organisations to lead the way and to keep our brands competitive ahead of the game and add value to our, to our brands. And I think you can only do that with, with courage. Um, so that's normally the message I tend to spout. What I really like of today's conversation over here, by the way, I'm Thomas Funk from Rep, is um, we talk so much about change and the challenges marketeers and agencies have together uh, because, well, um, Rick introduced the, the major changes and turbulences we have to deal with. At the same time, it feels like there is, uh, this comes out of uh, John's presentation as well, the principles of the relationship a brand has with its consumers are still somehow the same as they always were. And uh, I, I, it reminded me, actually, when I saw Gary's presentation about this hell of an effort to create this fantastic new engagement platforms, this new user experience. Uh, Philips creating such a vast, that this, this exciting um, content and then having branded content. And you were mentioning, actually, that uh, there was some cynicism as well when you put your content on YouTube of certain consumers. I remember uh, 10 years ago, probably not even that long ago, Philips created these magalogs, catalogs and magazines. In the end, the idea of that was creating interesting content and using this content to engage with the consumers and cross-sell into their product world. So somehow the principles are still the same. It's still about creating relevant content, exciting content, and at the same time have it as a branded content. We've always been in the, 
in the um, business of creating content that's going to be engaged with, but now there's the interactive thing, and you have to have the conversation. And I think you have to, look, I, I sat in front of 12 travel marketers for a round table we did just recently, and I said to them, how many of you have a really, really good, solid metric by which to measure social media success? And nobody put their hands up. I then asked them, how many of you are going to at least double your investment into social media before the end of the year? And they all put their hands up. So things are changing because, yes, there's a, a need for ROI and accountability, but there's also a need for engagement. And I think the engagement part, the interactive part, the part where you call speed, what I call is... Um, having to have a conversation rather than just sending anything out, that's key. And actually, uh, it leads to a question I wanted to talk to Emma about, which was, Emma said, and she stood here and you said, this will never happen again because how we are now set up. And yet, the volcanic uh, eruption in Iceland proves that it can happen again, and it probably will happen again because the unforeseen and the unpredictable is always there. Would you say, uh, in, in Eurostar and in Philips, that... Um, your campaigns require a lot of investment up front, but um, should, in theory, generate momentum that sort of has its own velocif velocity in time and therefore needs, you know, less input and less investment from the business, financially, I mean. Yeah, I, I think people will be really surprised at how little we spent on that Ridley Scott campaign. I think it's about focusing resources. So yes, I think that you need to develop uh, engaging content or you need to develop a specific utility that people will want to invest their time in, but that doesn't have to be costly at all. I mean, for this, for these two digitally led campaigns, both Carousel and Parallel Lines, we spent no more than we would have spent an, on a traditional campaign that we that we've done just a few years ago. Whereas normally, with a, you know, in the old days, you do a campaign once you've done your creative, bought your media, you kind of sit back and watch it happen. Whereas now, you've got to create depth, you've got to keep engaging people. So it becomes about resource and about um, keep continuously amplifying those messages rather than actually spending money on it.